working and working with this car. It's uh, done the uh, 24 hours of Dubai. Came out of the uh, came out of the trailer or the uh, container rather, and uh, from then on, it's been gone from stem to stern. The one cover of the sport, uh, Lotus, doing a cracking, cracking job. I think we might have a bit of a breaking news here. Unsafe release being reported on the number one, Andrea Simons, who car. We'll okay. keep an eye on that from right. a drive through. No, that would explain it. He's coming for a penalty then. Yeah. Uh, he's, he, I was concerned because he did a two lap stint only, uh, and uh, it was a very short pit stop. He's now on his way again, and uh, yeah, that was Andrea Simonson. Uh, so he is, yeah, that's his 10th pit stop, and the last one was just a drive through penalty. Uh, the other thing which uh, has happened, so it's not a problem with the car, it's just uh, delayed it uh, a little bit. Um, but the other thing that's happened on the racetrack, not really reflecting on the times, is that Ben Schneider is right on Matt Griffin's tail. Now, initially, Matt was able to get yes, past was. Schneider, pull away from him, but now uh, Schneider is either um, getting in the groove or that vibration is causing Matt Griffin some problems. Uh, as he goes down the straight or over the mountain, um, Richard, you're looking at it there. Yeah, it, it's visibly worse than it was a couple of laps ago on that bottom splitter section in the fluoro yellow part of the front bar on it's this gone. car. It's and gone. it's gone underneath the front wheels as he goes into the chase. Of all the places to come off, that is the last bit you were potentially lose your front arrow, must pit now. They need to get this uh, front bar replaced. And the leader pits, Tim Slade, pits the Erebus racing car. And Matt Griffin's going to continue on. What's going to happen now is he will get a meatball flag for having uh, unsafe components on the car, I guess. And they will need to go to pit lane to have this removed. And what's happened is it's sprung pop, but not all of the fixings and it's rotated about the one that's still there there's yeah. one screw fastener just hanging on just above uh, just below rather where the tow hook is on the right hand side about uh, a third of the way a quarter of the way across from the right hand front of the car now where is this going to fall off and what damage might it do is it go backwards burn schneider right behind him he's got to come in and get that pulled off unless it flies off the car this lap around now what i'm thinking though Rick, and I was going to say this just before it fell off the best thing that might happen is it falls off under speed and what difference will it have? Well it's clearly going to have some but it may just be a, you know, it's the, the last part of the arrow. Let's not speculate on this, let's go down the shit in the pit lane. Well it's stories like this that make you have faith in humanity Steve Cramp, your car is in the garage and what happened? Oh, uh, about half an hour ago with a driver change I got out of the car, my uh, the third driver Brad uh, Gosco the car, did one lap, we lost all power steering. We thought it was just a belt, but what actually happened, the power steering pump had failed. Um, these are uh, quite a unique car, and they're a very, very rare thing, and uh, obviously uh, trying to get a spare part for that is not impossible. So we've been putting out calls and so on, and um, we were just about to pull the pin. One of our guys drove walked through the um, uh, spectator paddock and saw one of these cars, and asked the guy nicely if we could borrow a part. And he said, there's the car, just take it. So uh, Chris uh, he's given us his car, and uh, what we're doing now is we're putting all the parts up we need for it. The car can't get back in the race. All be well, we'll be on the podium. And what is the VIN number on this car? What is the V? I'm sorry, I missed that. What's the VIN number on this car? Oh, uh, the one we borrowed the parts from. I hope Paul won't hear, but it's 01. That's pretty special. Oh, that's very good, and someone is going to go with a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch, uh, a whole selection uh, of racing gear. Matt Griffin is coming round, and I think this time, well, the officials have looked at it, but still haven't thrown him the flag, so he's okay. You know, I was just thinking that if he's that good, how close can he get to the wall and just break that bit off? <laughs> it's uh, it's probably carbon fibre though, so he doesn't want to run over any of the shards of it, Rich. That's a Problem. Yeah, well, we were talking off air just then while we were down in pit lane with Steve Cram uh, with Shay that I, I remember a moment watching British touring cars from not last season, season before. I think Snedden and Gordon Shedden had a front wing on the car sort of buckled out wide and he very skillfully just nicked a tyre bundle, tore the thing off and continued on. It was brilliant. Of course, he went on to win the championship last year. I was going to say, Shed's the champion yeah, last year. Honda, which is fantastic. But uh, yeah, well, let's see what Matt Griffin can do. And I'm guessing that the meatball flag that has just come out over the start-finish line will have the, the, the number 33 
on it. Yes, it does. Thank you very much to the guys uh, on the start line who are clearly listening to us over there, doing a great job, wow. as are the rest of the marshals around the track. And thank you very much yeah. for all the hard work. Those guys must be uh, must be pretty special marshals because they get to go under the bridge and stay in the shade. Yeah, it's so they must be top quality. They must be the yeah, best. They do nice work. <laughs> they do very, very nice work indeed. So Bern Schneider leads the race because we saw that pit stop from the second era of his motorsport car. Lee Holtworth back behind the wheel. Got a question for Paul. How long now has Matt Griffin been in the car? Um, that's on, on a piece of paper. Um, the reason I'm asking is clearly if they can bring him in now, rip that off, fuel him, and then send him to the end of his allotted driver time, it's not the big drama that it could have been. It won't throw them off and make them have to have an extra pit stop. That's the, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, three hours and five minutes right. since he's been behind he, the wheel. What's not what's going to restrict him is not his driving time. It's going to be the fuel and tyres on the car, or well, the fuel on the tyres on the uh, on the car specifically. And uh, he, I reckon, he'll take one more lap if he's. If, I, if on, I'm not mistaken. Well, on his fuel, he can go through. I reckon. Oh no, he's two. coming in. He's coming in, he's already in the lane, and he's coming in, but if he fuels now, Paul, he gets the best part of an hour, doesn't he? So that, yeah, yeah. Is, that is gonna be enough to take him to the end of his driving time. Yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah, that bit, you're right. That yeah. was the point I'm trying to make. He can he can do that, and a little bit more, in fact, so uh, he'll, he'll possibly get in for the final splash, something like that. Yeah, so drama, perhaps, but not as big of a disadvantage as it might have seen if they can fix that front splitter quickly enough, or they just rip it off and send Griff out straight away. Well, let's see what they've got. Into the lane they go. So, fuel at first. Don't touch the car. Don't yeah. touch the car, guys. It's just, just standard fuel. procedure. So, fuel goes in first. I'll make sure it's stopped full off. fill. And then they will go to work on the uh, on the front splitter. Now, I'd assume World Resource Team like Clearwater will have a replacement front bar. We just see it waiting in the wings there. And uh, we can see our team running into position as well. So fuel's going to go, air jack in, up on the struts. They're just going to pull that off. <laughs> that is everybody that they need to, to just pull that off. It's being held on by one bolt, and it is the strongest bolt in the world at this well, point. I was talking to one of the Audi teams, and they said their front splitter on the Audi R8 is so strong, you can literally get on the front of it and bounce on it, and it will not break. I'm wrong. What they're, they're doing it is refastening it. They're doing even better than that. They've already got the ratchet underneath there, and they're refastening it up with some pop rivets and... Getting the ratchet underneath. No, it's no, it's come off in one piece. Now will this end? Will this end? I think they're going to send it without. So let's see what the lap times are. Matt's going to have to be very careful. We may use a bit more front tyre here, but that's not the worst thing in the world. That's that is pretty swift work. The, the guys down at Clearwater. But they didn't change the tyres significantly, no. so it is going to do more tyre wear on tyres that are already worn. Yes. They haven't had a full then. stint though, have they? No, no, it was, um, how long was that stint uh, for that? Like, you could talk about something else. Yeah, well, what we're talking about with this car wearing front tyres out is that these cars are all aerodynamically very sensitive and tuned to be balanced front to rear with the yeah. amount of downforce they produce. So without that front spoiler on, the car will now have less downforce at the front. So naturally it will want to push across the racetrack and understeer into and out of the corners. Now Matt will have to adjust his driving style, maybe get into the corner slower, get on the throttle just a little bit later, maybe try and carry a little bit more mid-corner if he can. That car will now inherently understeer because it's got more aero at the back. It will want to grip at the back more than the front. That's going to be his problem. I wonder how much it's going to affect his lap times. We'll see if he completes the first one. He's you get fairly the, committed yeah, to the over the top there, isn't he? the feeling from Matt Griffin, actually, that he just will not care. And? You know, yes, exactly. <laughs> so and I don't get what's down. Who needs downforce? That's a class leader. That is the B-class leader, the number 30 Porsche, in ninth position overall. What a great run they have had. And uh, in that number 30, well, at least uh, bringing it in was Dave Russell. I think they'll be single stinting their drivers in that car, Rich, won't they? So he'll be getting swapped out. But inside the top 10, potential finish for a class B car, which is eventually a, effectively a, what, a two year old uh, 997 yeah, Cup car. Yeah. That's, you know, that's pretty good motor racing from those guys. It's 2011 spec, uh, yeah. MY11 spec Cup car. So did a couple of seasons in uh, Career Cup. In fact, I think that's the Career Cup car they used last season. So uh, good car. And the money's worth out of it. They have not wrong, but uh, 
twice. In the last two years, a Class B car has finished fourth in the Lick and Rolly Tour. About just missed out on the outright podium. So it's been a remarkable effort to get them there, but against a, a field that's probably five times as strong as last year's, even just to get into the top ten is an outstanding feat. It also sort of paraphrases that demanding and brutal this race has been and the attrition we've had from the...